Okay, I've taken some more um, flakes off this face, some strategic ones. Went ahead and thinned from the end because I knew I was going to lose a little bit of length anyway to come back to this side. It's a little bit flatter. I'm going to continue doing some blending where my edges are up high. See, I'm going to blend that over here. And this edge is still, in order to come back this way, that's a little high, so I'll blend that back down. And as we work around the blade, you can see a little length needs to be lost in order to bring that to below center line or at center line in order to really drive in here. So being liberal with um, losing a little bit of length early and sort of knowing when to stop is, is it's a juggling act, but you, something you figure out with an experience. And bring this down a little bit. This edge is just set up right to come back, as you can see. Maybe just to brush up. And we'll work directionally into the mass of the blade. We'll just take the skin off now. Um, it can get steppy if you don't take too thick of a flake. So I'll just get a good feel for how to remove the cortex and not leave any hangers. Leaving some hangers in the middle with a broad flake that ends in a hinge and having this cortex left. Some kind of times can get tricky to get it off. So I'll just do a little bit of smoothing blending and then the second set will probably clean it up. But we're in good shape. This rock is just awesome. Um, a lot of Georgetown really is improved when you finish it with just a light heat. Uh, this one it might have a little blemish in it here or there but I think that uh, it's just working. This is just sweet, sweet rock. So um, let's do what we just said and I'll have to switch to a smaller horn pretty soon, or antler. I use the word horn and antler interchangeably. It's just not the correct term, obviously. Moose have antlers, not horns, but just sort of picked it up somewhere. You other guys making napping videos. You're going to identify with me when you start napping and talking and try to teach. Some stuff comes out of your mouth that's just completely irrelevant. The explanation's in the middle of, like the horn explanation there. Or this explanation of that is just... When we nap, we don't sit and have these inner dialogues. So this communicating thing is like a little bit strange. But kind of neat. See, there's one of those hinges I told you about. A little step. It's not bad, but... It's just... And we'll come back around and make sure we clean that up from this side. You gotta pick and choose your big flakes. That one took care of it. You can see where it was on my leather is where that did that. And you want to make sure you don't press too hard because that's how you can get the reverse hinges if your angle's wrong. Spacing and blending. There's really no danger of breaking them at this stage unless you you got unlucky with your stone as a flow or you just do something ridiculously stupid. Hit something that's way too stout, but we'll be okay for a while. All right, I took the, I hope that you can see in this light, I took the skin off, just that's how much thickness I had to take off in order to peel that side. It's a little bit thinner, yeah. I'd like to have about a quarter inch more width than I do at this stage right now because we're still pretty fat, but it's a couple problem areas. Now I'm going to do, my ends are slightly thinner, see that? I'm going to thin these ends even more now. And 
Then I'm going to run some diagonal flakes into this mass from those ends. So I'll try to establish some, lose a little bit of width here, and then really come in and, and aggressively thin the next set down. So let me set up a few platforms, and we'll do that. Every time I brush these edges, I lose width, so I want to make sure it's for good reason that I do it. You know, you don't just hit flakes and mess up and then regrind and regrind and crush a flake, so regrind and, you know, you want to make sure that you use thickness for these short blending flakes intentionally when the thickness isn't created from mist strikes. I'm going to support it here and take off that cleaned out this flake off that other termination and our tip is getting thinner. Now blend off that. Another blend, space more. And this slow at this beveled edge. See how that did that? That back edge support, just slow. A very broad, heavy platform. Um, it just comes off. Two thirds is fine. We'll get that from the other side. It's really important, I think, to not trap some of these flakes. You know, let the let them come off into air, nice and slow. Tidy up as we go. This is a delta. A delta is a um, where the the ridges are created from a flake. So I'm going to do a blender here as in, as I move up. Sort of take care of that. So it's the same thing. Put it against my leg like that. Just. Nice little blender. Now let's move up. I'm going to keep going and turn the camera off. This is... I'll just show you the platform for this flake. This is just about a minute after I turned the camera off. I worked my way up doing some blending. I had to do some more work on this edge. You can see it's still not quite in line. But this lowered, this platform here is a good example of the kind I like to support because it's along, it was along a big ridge. Instead of just putting it against my leg and hitting it, I like to put it against my leg and kind of support underneath that flake because there's a lot of thickness coming off. And that flake was pretty, you know, just nice. This is raw, and it's, as, it, as you go, a really good rock always kind of, yeah, you realize that it's, as your platforms get more refined, that it's pretty tough still, which doesn't bother me, but... You know, I'm I'm gonna realize that I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make a 15 to 1 thin blade out of this thing. Not today. I want it, I'd rather it be clean. So, well, we'll just see how thin it ends up being. But you don't get better by trying to chip every piece as thin as you can. If thin is what you want to do. You get better by knowing your limits and staying within quality rather than pure width to thickness, you know, thinness, and just making small steps forward as far as what kind of platforms you can hit and how consistently. It's really not the hard part isn't hitting the platforms, it's making them and learning the grinding. Put this one against the back edge. Really grind this hard. Nice slow swing. Didn't go as deep as I like to, but you know, goes out of there. It's okay. Okay. All of these little cleanup flakes just take their, get their own attention. You know, that was just a, a blender, but it's very crucial and important. You know, set up the platform and make it smooth. Okay, now we've just done this edge and we're gonna come back at this edge even though our edges turned um, we're still gonna come back here and 